My dad and I were coming back from a family reunion in Tennessee, and we decided to go to some places that had made him the happiest as a child. Seeing as how our family had moved from that area before, he was far old enough to really remember them. We arrived at one specific location, and we noticed a famous stream that he would always talk about as a kid that he loved to go and fish at, play, and just be a kid had been replaced by a small highway. So we drove around a little while longer, searching for other areas. We found another good one, a little place that he liked to hang out as a teenager. This area was now full of discarded cans and garbage. It wasn't all that great. As we're kind of looking around this area, further back, there were trails that he would usually hike down. And you know, being a teenager was full of debauchery. He's motioning for me to continue down this trail that led just a little bit deeper into the woods. Now, keep in mind, at this point, a lot of the surrounding wilderness had been turned to highway, and much of the surrounding swamps were now being used for development, not like they were back in the 80s. Now, the surrounding woods we were entering were very thick, very dense. It even kind of cut off light the further in you went. And, you know... I don't know exactly what it was at first. I guess I kind of just got a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach. Not anything specific, like what you tell in your stories where people get the feeling that they were being watched. Nothing like that. It was more just a gut instinct, like it's probably not safe to continue on further. In that moment, I assumed it was maybe because there might be dangerous homeless people around, or drug addicts, or what have you since there did seem to be signs of homeless camps, what with all the garbage and cans and stuff, or worse. Now, out of the blue, my father stops dead in his tracks, sticks out his arm as if to stop me from walking further, and I look up at him, and he's staring right at something, and he has the most serious expression on his face. So I'm asking him, Dad, what do you see? What's up? And I look out to where he's looking, well, directly in front of us was kind of this little marsh, I guess you can call it. There was a cement wall on the other side that led to a lone road. Well, on this concrete block, or concrete wall, I guess you can call it, was a medium-sized storm drain. And out of the storm drain was climbing this, what I'll describe to you as a lizard man. I feel silly for even typing that, but... That's the only way how I know how to describe it. I mean, imagine a person in a lizard costume or something. Except the movements were so smooth that there's no way this would be somebody in a costume. All the way out here? It didn't really make any sense. We weren't exactly miles and miles out from town. But we also weren't in the middle of a metropolitan area either. And who in their right mind would be climbing out of a storm drain in that sort of costume. We saw it kind of climb its way out and climb down into the marsh. Luckily, we were kind of tucked away back in the trees enough where this creature or animal did not seem to notice us, but my father and I got a very good look at it. Honestly, it kind of reminded me of like a half-man, half-dinosaur sort of thing. The head was very much so reptilian-like. The body was covered in scales and it had a man very much like a body. Two arms, a chest, body, legs, all that stuff. Which is why I made the lizard man costume reference a paragraph ago. Once it climbed down out of the storm drain, it began walking off in the opposite direction, into the thick tree line where there's more dense, thicker swamps. It never turned to look in our direction and never seemed to have noticed us. My dad, of course, his gaze was locked on this thing for the whole 20-30 seconds that we watched it disappear. I think him and I were in such shock and awe, but more so him. I kind of couldn't believe my eyes, but he seemed to have this look on his face that just screamed danger. After this thing disappeared into the thicket of the trees, he finally broke his gaze and looked at me and just said, we should leave now. You know, I wasn't going to challenge that. I didn't ask any questions, so we quickly headed on back up the trail, maybe no more than a half a mile, 
up to the original spot that had all those discarded cans and garbage, made our way back further, and got to the car. After some time, I was the one to finally break the silence and ask, Dad, what did we see out there? I mean, we both saw it, right? Is that some sort of unidentified animal or maybe undiscovered species? He remained quiet and just looked at me with a very cold stare and said, I don't know, son, but I didn't like it. I mean, I know it's a very anticlimactic ending to my encounter, but that's really all it was said, and my father and I have not talked about it since. I mean, I don't really see much of a reason to, but uh, I thought in recent events with the world, I would maybe try and find some time, now that I had off, to reach out to different paranormal investigators and even story narrators, which is why I'm kind of drawn to your work and your channel. So, I thought I would shoot you an email. And hey, worst comes to worst, I don't get a response. And best comes to best, you read my story and your audience can help me out, since it appears they've helped out so many others. Best of luck and thank you so much. It was at night time, and I was driving along Highway 24, right around the area of this old mill house. This is when I stopped at a stop sign, and I see something large coming out of the tall field grass. At first, I assumed it was maybe a deer, but then I saw it was clearly no deer. The creature I saw, well, I can't identify it. I can tell you this, though. It was a behemoth of a thing. Maybe 800 pounds, and I'm not exaggerating. And its body was large and very serpentine-like, or snake-like, I should say. The head alone was maybe two or three feet large. Yeah, I'm not kidding you. This thing was massive. And it just seemed to kind of rise up out of the grass so calmly. It got about 10 feet away from my car and just glanced on by as if me being there wasn't a big deal at all. In fact, it really didn't pay any attention to me, like it could have cared less that I even saw this thing. And as you can imagine, seeing something like this for the first time, especially at night, feeling extremely vulnerable, having no weapons, nothing, I was terrified out of my mind. This giant human reptile thing walking around with two red eyes, Part of me wanted to just stick in my disbelief. This creature checked off every box in a horror movie cliche. But at the same time, I couldn't deny what I was seeing. Its gait, its movement. You could see its muscles and skin. I mean, either this was somebody in the most convincing Hollywood monster costume I have ever seen and that's ever been made. Or this was something truly out of this world. What's your opinion? This story takes place back in 2014. I was in a two-story house with my brother, kind of out in the backwoods of Missouri. He and his band rented this house out collectively for rehearsal. It wasn't an out-of-town too far, but you had to drive maybe about 10-15 minutes to get to it. And being a good brother that he is, allowed me to stay in the upper two stories part, which is just one big open room, which I used for my bedroom for a couple of weeks, after getting out of a very toxic relationship. So, very early on in the morning, I'd say three or four, I was having trouble sleeping, and I'm out there on the balcony, looking down, just at the woods and the surrounding area, lost in thought. And I suddenly see a huge, maybe six, seven foot tall dark figure darting across the tree line. It caught my attention, and I thought it was an animal at first, until I looked. That's when I could see the figure much more clearly, because it moved. What I was looking at was a large bipedal animal, and believe it or not, it kind of resembled a cross between a gorilla, a lizard, and a human. Although, I couldn't see every enunciation of detail. It was very dark in color. Not just its coloring, but the lighting as well. Its head was huge, it had big long arms, and its body was also large too. 
The head, though, was more elongated and, like I stated, easily six to seven feet tall. The only reason that I even saw this thing was because it was a full moon that night, but where the moon was positioned and angled in the sky did not, unfortunately, light up this thing so I can get a look at it. It was in fact on the other area of the sky, giving just enough light that I could see something was here, but not all the details that I wanted. I know it might sound kind of morbid, but I was kind of wanting to see what this thing looked like. Only because it was so unique, I guess. It stood there in the tree line for maybe, what, 10-15 seconds, and then it kind of disappeared deeper into the woods. I was the only person at the house at the time, and I actually wasn't that creeped out. While it was slightly disturbing, I kind of just wrote it off as maybe the darkness playing tricks in my eyes. Maybe the stress and emotional baggage from the bad relationship was causing me to see things that weren't exactly there. I slept on it, and after getting up the next morning, I realized last night was indeed not just stress, but I actually saw something. I've always been a believer in monsters and animals we might not be able to explain, and I've even seen some strange things in my life. But this, my friend, was definitely the strangest I had hands down ever seen. I was on this big adventurous hike to a lake with my friends. We had to walk through at least a couple of mile of woods from where we parked to get to said lake. And for the sake of the story, I'm going to keep the name of the lake anonymous, but I can tell you that it was a very popular lake. Still is. And since I was leading me and my few friends, I was of course in front. And as we're walking through the woods to get to said lake, I noticed something weird. I saw this big shadow, and I looked at it, trying to figure out what it was. I noticed it was kind of watching us from in between some trees, and it stayed perfectly still, so that's why I didn't exactly catch it at first. My first inkling was that it was maybe a man, but the more I looked at it, even with how dark it was, it looked wrong. Now, before I go on, you might be thinking, oh, well, you just saw Bigfoot. But I'm telling you, Bigfoots don't look like this thing did. This had a much more reptile-like appearance. The head was very long. The arms were very long. It kind of reminded me of a serpent head on a human body, with scales and everything, but just dark. After looking at it, I stopped my friends and had them look too, just to make sure I wasn't going crazy. As soon as we all stopped and began gawking at this thing, it immediately tilts its head up to look at us and starts jolting after us. We all start screaming and began running back the way we came. We could hear it chasing after us in the woods, and it caught up very quickly. I mean, it was probably no more than 30 yards away at max, and it was in a section of woods where it wasn't so thick we couldn't see it. It's like it was waiting there for somebody, for us. The thing chased after us, though, and it was moving so fast. I didn't think it was possible. We didn't know what to do, so we ran and we ran. And we were able to ran back to where we had initially parked. I was so scared. I mean, all of us were. We were all looking at each other like, did that just happen? What was that? I'm not sure why, but... I believe whatever this thing was could have caught up to us and grabbed us, but it didn't. It just, it's like it wanted to chase us out for whatever reason. We were only maybe a half mile in the trail, and we all said that we could all hear it almost right behind us, right in the trees. I'm not sure why it never reached out and tried to grab any of us. That's kind of a mystery to me. So we all get in the car and we drive off and we're trying to speculate what it was. What animal could it have been? A few of us talked and argued that it was a Bigfoot, but Bigfoots don't look like that. Not that I'm aware of, at least, unless I'm missing something. Yes, we were all terrified, but I strongly feel that this was something else entirely. 
I don't know if lizard men exist or snake men exist, but that's the closest thing I could even compare it to. It was my son and I, and a friend. We were out trout fishing at a local lake, not too far away from home base. It was a late summer evening, around maybe 9.30, just enough to where it was getting pretty dusky, but not quite dark yet. We were all sitting at the end of a dock fishing, and we had our dog, Jody, with us. He's a sweet boy, a Labrador retriever. We take him on all of our outings. He, at least we like to think he keeps us safe. He barks whenever there's a predator around, so he does a pretty good job of warning us and warding off any potential danger. And thanks to him, with this encounter, we saw what we did and potentially saved our lives. We're sitting there with our lines in the water, lost in conversation, and we hear Jody start barking and barking at something. I turn my attention, and I see he's barking at the water, off to our left. Then, I look a little closer, and I see the shape of something large coming up out of the lake. I motion to my friend and my son, and they all look in unison, and we're watching as Jody now begins to bark frantically, going crazy, and then... Out of the lake steps this horror. I don't even know how to describe it accurately in detail. It kind of reminded me of a half-man, half-alligator. Really ugly and grotesque looking. Covered in scales and that thick armor plate that alligators are known for having. It just kind of ascends up out of the water. This elongated face. It turns and looks at us, stares at Jody, and casually walks off into the thicket that's right there, maybe no more than 10 feet from the water. As soon as it fully ascends out of the water and onto the shore, Jody begins whimpering and running back towards us, as he's terrified of whatever creature that is. My son, nearly soiling himself, was screaming, Dad, Dad, what is that? What did we just see? And my friend, of course, was silent, as was I. We couldn't really say much, but... We all three agreed in unison. Let's leave. I just didn't feel it was safe there anymore. On the drive back, we all kind of talked about it a little more and said, man, I don't know what that thing was. But as soon as we saw it, this feeling of we should leave now, it's not safe, just kind of took over all of us. I mean, had it not, I don't think we would have left. Something was wrong. What that something was, I don't know. Look, I am not an advocate for the strange and paranormal. I don't believe in ghosts or any of that, or even Bigfoot or strange creatures. But I can't explain this animal. I don't want to go so far as to say it was a lake monster. I feel like that's ridiculous, but I've never seen a reptilian that was bipedal that also came out of the lake. That was a first for all of us. Let me just say this first and foremost. I'm not a conspiracy person. I don't own a tinfoil hat, metaphorically of course, and I'm a pretty rational, scientific-rooted person. But I have no way to explain away this experience that I had back in 1998. Let me tell you, I was just a sophomore in college, and I was working in a bar in a small town in southwestern Florida. It was a great place, frequented by locals, many of whom I knew and many of whom knew me. We had a lot of regular faces. It was a place where people could get beer and never have to worry about somebody making them feel uncomfortable or getting hit on or getting in a fight. At least, not while on my shifts. It was a fun place. At the time, I was the only girl working there. I was the bartender and the only female that served beer. So, I was the only female that had to work at the bar. The place was a small old building that had originally been a gas station and years later was converted to the store and then eventually became a bar. The bar was in the front 
in the back of the building held the kitchen, a small office, and the bathrooms. So, enough about that. It was a Saturday night. I was working the bar all by myself, which I was accustomed to. I had worked by myself quite a bit, and I'm not going to lie. I have never made as great as tips as I ever have in my life working that job. But tonight was pretty slow. The place only had a few customers, and I was chatting with a group of maybe three people who were sitting there at the bar. Just small talk. Just joking around and having fun. I thought I was having a pretty good time, and till this particular man walked in. He walks up right to the bar and I turn around, cleaning a bar mug. I did not know this man. I had never seen him before, but there was something interesting about what he wore and the way he looked. I did not know anybody else who knew him. In fact, I wasn't the only one startled by his presence. Everybody in that bar seemed to kind of have that Hollywood movie moment where the guy walks in and where everybody just stops and kind of stares with a blank expression. That's the perfect way to kind of captivate this moment. He sits down, never breaking a stare. I mean, he's a big guy, strong jawline, dark hair. He had a black shirt on and jeans and looked like he had just come from the gym. The thing that struck me the most, though, was his eyes. They were these incredibly dark eyes. Not like fully black or anything, but he just had really stark, contrasty eyes. They were almost hypnotizing, and not in a lustful, romantic way. It was almost like a trance, like he had this power. I know, I know, it's a bizarre description, but that's what it was. He had this very intense look on his face, almost like he was waiting for somebody, me to say something. So... I kind of stood there without a word, just staring back at him, wondering who this guy was. After a little bit, maybe 10 seconds, I nervously just said, can I help you, without him ever breaking his gaze. He just kept stare, smirked a little, and just said, I think so. And now at this point, I was getting creeped out. His demeanor, his attitude, everything was just weird. I mean... I've worked here already for a while, and no guy has ever just came in here and looked at me like that, without saying anything. I didn't know what he wanted, and I did not know who he was. So, my response was, um, okay, what do you want? He paused for a moment. Keep in mind, during this entire interaction, I don't even think I saw the man blink once, let alone break eye contact. It was the creepiest thing. He calmly just says, I want you, in a very monotone. At this point, not only am I creeped out, but I'm confused. And in the moment and being nervous, I was like, um, I'm working, what do you want? He smirked again and said, I would like to buy you a drink, if you want one. I had to politely kind of shoot him down and say, well, I'm working, so I don't drink right now but maybe if you stick around, you can buy me one later. So, he said, okay. And he just sat there, looking at the menu. And so now I'm kicking myself for even saying that. Stupid, stupid. Why did I give him such an invitation? Oh gosh, I was a nervous wreck. The people sitting at the bar just kept staring back at me, staring back at him, staring at each other, exchanging glances of confusement and, oh boy, she's in trouble kind of look. He sat there quiet, and I was busy cleaning and doing my job duties. Maybe 45 minutes goes by and he's still sitting there, staring at the menu. I think I asked him, have you thought about what you wanted yet? And as he turns to look up back up at me, here's the terrifying part. As he lifts his head up in response to my question, his eyes were not normal. They were something wrong with them. They looked like snake eyes or something. They were this dark green and had these huge black slits in them. And maybe like a half second later, no more than a second, it's almost like they turn normal again. Like the same way an alligator does. You know, how they have those secondary eyelids. It was like a blinking, but not with his actual eyelids. I kind of screamed when I saw it, 
and kind of flung myself back. He did that blinking thing and his eyes were normal again, just very dark, and he looked puzzled, but still very mono-expressive, tilted his head very robotically and asked, what's wrong? I told him, you need to get out of here now or I'm calling the police. Then, without ever breaking eye contact, he slowly stands up, then turns his head and his body and slowly goes to walk out the door. As he gets to the door, he stops as his hand touches the door, turns around, looks at me again, and says, It's a shame. You would have made such a great addition. Then immediately turned around and walked out. That was the last I ever saw of him. My skin felt like it was crawling. I was so creeped out. The guys at the bar were like, Who was that guy? And I told them, I don't know. Luckily, my regulars were very kind and nice to me and said, Hey, we don't know who he was, but we all got the creeps. We'll stay here late if you'd like to you close to protect you. I thought that was very kind, and I took all three guys up on the offer. And they stayed with me until my shift ended at around 1 or 2 in the morning, kept me company. The guy never reappeared. So, that's my college story. Now, here's an important note. Fast forward almost 10 years to about 2009, and my aunt is very big, still is by the way, into the paranormal and things like conspiracy theories, reptilians, you know, all that kind of stuff. Nothing that I really ever pay attention to. But I guess she was telling me that there are these beings called reptilians. They apparently have the ability to shapeshift into people. I kind of laughed the notion off at first, and then she went on to show me some clips of people being caught on camera like newscasters and TV hosts and celebrities, except their eyes change, and she showed me that. I felt my skin crawl again. That memory of that night instantly came back to me. That's exactly what I saw that night. I didn't tell my aunt anything. I mean, I always thought she was kind of crazy, but I just kind of shot her down and was like, yeah, that's, that's terrifying. But I knew deep down, something was wrong with that man. I can't sit here and say with concrete evidence that was exactly the case, but the resemblance to the video she showed me, to what his eyes looked like and his strange odd behavior, sure is uncanny how close they're related. Hi, what lurks beneath? Before I tell you this, I trust you'll keep my name anonymous and my location anonymous as well. And I also trust that you'll at least hear me out, and if I'm lucky, read my story. I know you're a busy man, and so I bet with all the stories you get, you probably don't have much time. Well, here's mine, and feel free to use it if you'd like. I lived in the swampy areas of Illinois for a very long time. I was deer hunting in the swamps, well, about three years ago now. This day in particular was very foggy, and I was busy walking along a path in the swamp. I heard a noise that was not something I'm used to hearing. It was like this very fast pitter-pattering, except the pitter-pattering was not that of light weight. These were heavy, more like thuds against the ground. I knew it was something because, again, I never heard anything like this before, thinking maybe it was an alligator. I got down, crouching and listening for a moment, it was actually coming up in the trees around me, not on the ground. I'm thinking to myself, what the? And then I hear branches kind of breaking and moving up in the trees around me. So I get up from a crouched position and I'm looking around. Instantly, as I turn behind me, I see these glowing pairs of eyes looking at me. This was during the day, mind you, so my visibility wasn't exactly poor. What I was looking at, I have no explanation for. It was just this big creature. It looked very dinosaur-like, if I can describe it. I had a hard time seeing the entirety of the thing, even though the light was good, because of how it was holding onto the tree. It was kind of crouched, on a large branch, actually, higher up in the trees. It had a pretty big head, and looked to be bigger and taller than I was. I didn't waste any time. I ran back to my truck, and I've never really sat down to tell anybody this before. 
but I know what I saw and it was not a deer. What this thing was, I don't know. To me, it reminded me of some failed genetic experiment somebody tried to do by splicing human and dinosaur DNA. Sure, it sounds like a science fiction plot gone wrong, but that's what I saw. This was back in 2016. I was with my friend Josh on a run in the Pine Barrens in southern New Jersey. It was a cool autumn morning. The sun was out, and the leaves were just starting to change color. And it was the perfect morning for a run. We were running a trail, you know, just for exercise and to get some good fresh air. A nice, brisk pace always helps the body. And this particular trail was slightly challenging, with it being uphill. We were both talking about how nice it was out and how much we enjoyed being out here in the woods. So, here's a quick note, before I go any further with my story. Yes, I'm aware that Pine Barrens is home to all sorts of strange stories and encounters. Things like UFO sightings and bright lights, alien abductions, Bigfoots, and yes, even the Jersey Devil. I've heard it all. But I've never experienced anything myself. Never seen anything, never felt anything weird, and... I've lived here for a long time. Not all my life, but enough and enough time in the Pine Barrens hiking and running around that I feel like if those things were true, I would have seen something, at least by now. Well, that mentality that I had was proven wrong this day. As I was saying, we were running on this trail when, up ahead of us, we see something. Now bear in mind here, this is what we saw we saw something big climbing out of the ground. At first, we kind of stopped thinking, what is this? But it happened very fast. This large, lizard-like thing pulled itself out of the ground within a matter of seconds, like it just kind of dug itself out. Think of how in the movies where it shows, you know, zombies digging themselves out of a grave and pulling themselves up. It was similar to that, but... It was way faster. It was like a slick, solid motion of just arms out, body coming up out of the ground, boom. I feel like the phrase pooping bricks is a severe understatement to how Josh and I felt. We were frozen, as this being had pulled itself out of the ground, and its expression was kind of stunned and shocked that we were there, like it wasn't sure how to react to the fact that we had seen it. And we were kind of just locked in this stare for, I don't know, maybe five seconds before Josh just grabs me and takes off going the opposite direction. My body reacted and we both ran as fast as we could. Somehow, we managed not to scream and I'm really surprised I didn't scream like a little girl after seeing what we did. We get all the way back down the trail and get back to the parking lot where we stop and try to catch our breath. After heaving and breathing heavily, maybe a minute goes by and we're finally able to breathe enough to where we can ask each other, what was that? Did you see that? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And yeah, I can't believe we saw that. What was that? None of us knew. None of us even could even think about what it could have been. Like I told you already, I have lived here for at least 10 plus years and have never even heard or seen of anything remotely like that. Let me give you a good description of what it was since we had such a good view of it. This thing was a dark green, almost black, and it was covered in scales. It had a body similar to a man, but very large clawed hands and feet, and the head was almost kind of like a velociraptor, at least in shape. The eyes were a very contrasty yellow, very piercing, actually. We never saw any teeth, but... I guess the best description, I would call it, is a dinosaur man, because it was like half man, half dinosaur, I guess. I also didn't see a teeth, but this thing was also ripped. I mean, through its scales, you could see its rippling muscles, all over its arms, all over its chest and stomach. I did not see any genitalia. It was not wearing any clothing or anything to cover that. I don't know what it was, and I don't want to go back in those woods to find out if we're honest.
In my early teens, my brother and I would always go out to the backwoods to hunt for treasure. We often implored the use of a metal detector. We found all sorts of cool but useless stuff in hindsight. Bottle caps, old knives, cans, forks, things like that. Nothing too exciting, but as a teenager, it was like striking gold. The adventure would usually start with us being out after dark, coming home muddy and exhausted. I mean, hey, it got us out to the woods and burned a lot of calories in the process. I guess this is why we always stayed in shape, which would come in handy for what would happen in the story. Let me just take a brief moment and explain the layout of the land. Our father owned a vast amount of acreage on the back side of our property. You had multiple creeks, and it kind of dipped down and you go further and further back, and then the land kind of goes up into a hill. Once you get to the top of this gradual slope, you could go back down again into a deeper section of valley that was all just forest upon forest. Now, during the fall season, my father would use these areas as hunting, and even had multiple deer stands set up all throughout there. My brother and I never really ventured that far out. I mean, we're talking hundreds of acres here. So, we generally stayed within maybe a mile or two at most of our own house. Don't quote me on the distance thing, though. I really have no way to verify that measurement. It's just from my recollection. So, we often had this evening ritual. We'd be out there pretty much all day, playing and trying to look for stuff to hunt for treasure with, and of course, using our trusty metal detector. By about evening time, sometimes we would sit and relax, my brother and I, on top of the far back large hill, and just kind of hear the crickets slowly fade into the night, and see the weather and sky change. It was always really peaceful. Sometimes, well, more often than not, we would actually see foxes and deer, I can't dismiss it that it was really cool, but there was one night that I feel for me and my brother, but I can't speak for him. It kind of changed things. So we had a fairly normal day of hunting for treasure, and again, I don't believe we found anything extraordinary, at least not that I can recall. And we were doing our usual of sitting atop this large hill, looking out into the night valley, or should I say almost night. That's when we started to hear sounds from the hill below us. Something big moving around. My brother was the first one to hear it, as it got his attention first. He starts looking in that direction, and knocks me on the shoulder, saying, Hey, listen. And you could hear something big moving around. We thought it might be a buck or something, just due to the amount of noise it was making. But you could hear it was moving, and you could hear it wasn't walking, like the way a deer would. It was two-legged, whatever it was. And so now we're both really curious, trying to look through the trees and see if we can see anything. But we don't see anything. At this point, in the sky, it's pretty dusk. It's not totally blackout yet, but it's getting dark. And my brother and I were never afraid of walking back to the house at night, since we knew this part from the hill back to our house pretty well, and we were pretty hardy teenagers. We just kept thinking, there's no way somebody's back here. I mean, the only way to access it is you'd have to go all the way around, maybe another 40 or so acres in either direction. And, quite frankly, if somebody was out here, they would have a lantern or some sort of flashlight. And there's really nothing out here. It's not hunting season, there's nothing of value. There's no reason why anybody should be back here. And the other thing is this movement sounded like it was coming from something very large, much bigger than just a man. All these thoughts are going through my head, and I'm sure my brothers at the same time. And we're looking, and we're looking. And then, my brother and I at the same time in unison see these red glowing eyes just appear down in the bottom of the hill and they're moving up towards us. I believe again, my brother sees it first, and he hits me on the shoulder, and he says, look, and points. And we both see it. This figure, this tall figure is coming towards us with red eyes. I remember saying, what is that? 
and it gets closer and closer. And I think at this point, we were both so scared, we couldn't even get up to move. I know the natural instinct is to probably get up and run, but when you're that terrified, on a primal fear level, it's different. It grounds you in a way that you can't physically react like you're supposed to. It got closer and closer, till the shadows and darkness of the tree coverage became lighter and lighter, and we could start to make out what it was. It's almost like the lack of darkness allowed this thing to be illuminated by whatever little light there was supplied by the stars and the moon. My brother and I got a front row show to the horror of whatever this creature was that certainly was far from anything human. And after seeing it with my own eyes, which I later verified with my brother in verbatim to make sure we saw the same thing, this looked like some sort of lizard alien thing. I'm not sure what else you'd call it, to be honest. But I can tell you, it had a flat face, slitted pupils, large red-yellow eyes, a very reptilian-shaped like head. It was very tall, not really built strong full of muscles, like you would see in a bodybuilder, but more so very lanky in its torso and its arms and legs, and it had this large tail behind it. It was kind of like a large lizard man, I guess if that's the best way to describe it. It never opened up its mouth, so I never saw any teeth, but I could tell that its face, like I said, was flat, and the nose had slits. It also never made any sounds, other than the crunching of leaves and coming up from the brush. It was maybe, I don't know, 50 feet away from us, when my brother manages to jump up, grab me by the collar, and yank me and pull me. Somehow, like kick starting a motor, that's all my legs needed in order to run back to the house. And at this point, it was dark. Maybe not pitch black, but darker. And the second we go running down the hill, back towards the slope up to our property, we can hear this thing now picking up its pace, chasing us, running behind us, and it's gaining quickly. Trust me, I did not look back. I know all about that. I was not going to risk that happen and falling and tripping over a rock and just being bait for whatever this thing was. Again, it never screamed or let in any noise, just that it gave chase. We made it to the bottom of this hill and the gradual slope back up to our house. I think it must have stopped either way, somewhere along before we hit the bottom, because afterwards we didn't see it anymore or hear it, and I really have no idea what it was. We'd made it back just in time. Our parents weren't home, and so I didn't want to tell them anything anyway. I talked to my brother, asked him, what do you think that was? Because we both saw the same thing. We're not crazy. We didn't just see stuff. We did not hallucinate. That thing was as real as flesh and blood can get. And it's safe to say we didn't sleep that much that night. As terrified as I was from the whole experience, I tried to think analytically. Like, okay, this is obviously some sort of large predatory animal, bipedal or not. Then I start thinking about the logistics. Well, there's a lot of food back there. Tons of deer, tons of bear and foxes, lots of food, lots of places to go undisturbed and hide. If there was anywhere, there would be some sort of creature like this. That back side of the property is exactly where you would find one. Although, I'm sure that my father has maybe had sightings himself, but he would never tell us, I'm sure. We had gone back there since multiple times, and yes, even at dusk, but we never saw this thing again. You might call me either brave or stupid for going back there, especially at dark. But, you know, when you're a teenager, you think you're practically invincible, as we did. We felt that if we had a bowie knife and the proper tools, we would be more equipped to handle a situation like that, which we kept on us all the time from that point forward, but never encountered it again, whatever it was.